Okay, it's day 56, and I'm measuring the largest first true leaf of this most dominant plant. And it's about two inches long, I would say. It's hard to get an accurate measurement with just one hand. If I flatten this leaf, it's roughly one and a half inches wide. And the second true leaf of that same plant is developing quite nicely. It's seen a lot of growth in the last 24 hours. So just to give you a tour of this entire thing, you know, there are four very large seedlings now. And they have very well developed first true leaves. And they're currently working on their second true leaves, with the one with the shortest stem being the most dominant and largest. And that's also the one that's least prone to falling over. So the cotyledons are still intact and they're still photosynthesizing. So I assume this is how correct development should go. Not what I thought it was, uh, according to the very last seedling that managed to survive from the the first wave of seedlings and developed what I thought was a woody stem and that one basically saw stunted development probably due to isopropanol poisoning in the first two uh, isopropanol sprayings early on in this experiment. There's also this fifth seedling right here that's developing quite nicely. This is the one that was hugging the side of the glass bowl and we got a good look at its root development so it's going to develop a first true leaf and be on par with these other seedlings but on a later timetable. Underneath the canopy are some seedlings that basically failed. Um, this one that I'm centering on showed a lot of promise earlier on but I'm not sure. It, it still could develop and it's in a good spot to develop and flourish on its own because it has a lot of empty space around it. But you know this one is a goner. Likewise, this one's a goner, but the one next to it has some hope. I mean, it has a first true leaf and a second true leaf developing. It just doesn't have its uh, root system set straight because it's been inverted for so long. So as you can see from this angle, it has a root ball that's desperately just still trying to get into the soil with its lateral roots. And it's somewhat succeeding only because I sprayed a lot of water and flooded the soil. So here you can get a better look at the first true leaf and the second true leaf. If those get big enough, that'll be a sign that this plant will probably make it. There are still traces of what I consider to be mold, um, some kind of white mold developing on the surface of the soil. It's inevitable, you know, but I think I'll spray some Lysol to kill that. Okay, I just put on gloves and did some garbage cleanup duty and I got rid of a lot of the dead plants and debris and sprayed some Lysol to ensure that the mole growth doesn't get out of control. A few minutes earlier I tilted this bowl to check the water levels and I think these plants are voracious in terms of how much water they need so you know maybe a proper flooding of the bowl every two to three days is in order. That seems to be the current scheme and the plants seem to be doing really well for it. And finally, I'm doing a side shot to give you an idea of how robust the growth has been compared to the first 40 days or so of the experiment. Okay, it's day 59. I'd say the first true leaf is 2.1 inches long. The first true leaf of this plant is 1.5 inches wide, but if I were to flatten this leaf, it would no doubt be more. The second true leaf of this plant is about 1.5 inches long. I would say the width is 2 times 0.75 inches or 1.5 inches total. So here's an overview of this plant, the most well-developed one with a short stem that I'm talking about. It has well-developed first and second true leaves, and it's working on a third true leaf. And as you can see, the cotyledons are still nice and green and intact. So in this case, uh, this seedling fell over pretty early on. Uh, you know, it displayed a lot of phototropism. It kind of grew in this direction, and then, you know, it just fell over and uh, lay against the side of the bowl and it never got back up again. So this plant having these curled cotyledons helps it in that it can collect light reflecting off this aluminum foil off the glass, you know, at all different angles. And it can no longer respond to the daily movements of the sun by phototropism. So, you know, for whatever reason its stem just kind of fell over and it can't curl back enough to get back to the sun and respond to it during the day like these plants can. 
And even these plants have a very limited response after a certain amount of growth. So in the prequels to this episode, I discussed how there's a fifth seedling that's growing along the side of the glass bowl. And you know, it had that man-shaped uh, root from early on, but now it's sort of branched out and it's really well developed. So this one's coming along nicely. It has a first true leaf and pretty soon I estimate it'll be as big as the others. It's just on a delayed timetable because it germinated slower. And lost in all the noise is this six seedling and I'm just ranking them in terms of a place of development. So this one still has that problem where it has a root ball that's facing up and you know it kept getting pushed further up but when I flooded this bowl in one of the waterings it sank beneath some of the soil so the curved stem is basically like in a J shape I would say with the uh, longer end of the J being the shoot system so these cotyledons were trapped by the seed husk for a long time but that's almost irrelevant now because it's working on some order of malformed uh, first true leaf and a decently shaped second true leaf so if that stem or you know these petioles can grow longer and these leaves can grow bigger quickly before they get overshadowed by the other plants and everything will be fine with regards to this root ball at least I think four of these lateral roots have found their way in and you know you can see some more trying to find their way down into the soil so I think this plant will do fine as for the seventh seedling it's a problem seedling it's had its cotyledon stuck in there for too long and it's been pushed down you know its development wasn't really stunted by this plant on top of it it was more that once I watered uh, one time the plant basically had its roots exposed a few millimeters above the soil level and that caused them to dry out and now that it's sort of knocked over and under this plant I just don't think it's gonna make it there's been a lot of growth over the last two days so this vine is definitely a water hog and I think I need to water it basically every 48 hours uh, 72 is kind of pushing it I just lifted up the bowl and I saw a lot of air spaces underneath between the glass and the soil so that means you know probably tomorrow morning I'll give it a good watering again and at this point I'm largely just pouring because I'm not that afraid of disturbing the soil anymore these plants are pretty well established and the bottom of the bowl is covered with a network of roots. Technically today is day 59. I mistakenly called day 58 day 59 but uh, it was already about midnight at that point so you know the date on my computer had changed. So I just wanted to do a demonstration of how this aluminum foil reflector works. So if I were to take this down you can see the amount of light that hits these leaves uh, decreases drastically. So it's not apparent for all of the plants, uh, but for this one in the back, if you peel back the aluminum foil, the amount of light that hits it decreases by a lot. So it actually does help a lot, and it depends on how you shape this reflector. I try to make it a sort of a curved bowl. For the ones in the front, the impact might not be as obvious. Uh, let me try that again there's still an impact. So for the second true leaf of this most well-developed plant it's very large and it's almost round and yesterday it was folded up or actually it was roughly maybe 18 hours ago so you know what a difference 18 hours makes. So allow me to do a demonstration of what a real mirror would do so I'm gonna take a full-length body mirror and turn it on this And here's a demonstration from another angle. See what a dramatic difference that makes? Okay, it's day 60. And as you can see, there's further growth. So I'm really pleased with what's happened in this last week, or in the last few days. Uh, the growth has just been phenomenal. So this was not the biggest plant a few days ago but it seems to have a first true leaf that's really big and if I measure this you know it's two inches wide 
you know, maybe 2.3 inches. Um, if I were to unfold that leaf, it'd probably be 2.5 inches. And now let's try to measure the first true leaf that I've been measuring before. I would say it's just as big, you know. Oh, no, actually it's it's smaller. So this plant, by having superior positioning, um, well, that's entirely due to me and being close to the sun or closer and starting to cover up this leaf it has gained an advantage so that first true leaf is enormous and it's developing a second true leaf that's not quite as well developed I mean if you look here this plant has devoted a lot of resources uh, to making a second true leaf that's just huge and if we look at the other plants they're not quite as robust and this is very interesting because you know this is kind of pro propped up against the reflector uh, basically what this plant is doing is it's displaying phototropism towards the reflector which means that the reflector is working there's a lot of light coming off that otherwise this stem wouldn't you know grow in this direction it would have grown towards the sun so going back to the most well-developed plant you can see this third true leaf developing so I keep forgetting to point with a floss stick for whatever reason I just end up throwing these things away and then I end up pointing with my fingers again in these videos and that blocks up you know a third of the screen so this third true leaf is coming along very nicely as you can see it has these serrated edges very interesting in older leaves it just branches out and becomes like that that's coming along nicely you can see all these hairs on the plant there's a shoot apical meristem I believe we're also looking at another marrow stem here, so something will grow out of that. If plants are given the perfect developmental conditions, they should end up like this plant. It has a shorter stem and it's upright. And if you look at this plant, which is kind of begging the reflector for some extra sunlight, that didn't get off to a, as good of a start for whatever reason. If there's less light in a certain position, then the stems become elongated and the petioles will become longer. So while I don't see a huge difference in the petiole length here compared to here, I believe that early on the development was not as optimal. And there's also the natural effect of uh, phototropism, but you know, just the stems growing so long and trying to chase the sun and causing the plant to fall over and become, you know, assume their natural vine-like behavior, that's a sign that conditions weren't as optimal as in this plant. In the case of this sole surviving inverted plant, the root ball is upside down still and it does have some roots that have reached into the soil emanating from it and the cotyledons are still trapped within the seed husk. But this is one of the true leaves, the second one I believe, that has developed uh, in an atypical shape but it's getting some work done. If I were to spin this bowl over, here is the original true leaf and it has a very atypical shape due to the way uh, this plant developed. Uh, basically it never grew fast enough for healthy development. Nevertheless, this plant is starting to develop a third true leaf right here. That's where its uh, shoot ape colmera stem is. So I think this plant has the potential to recover but it still needs to do a lot of work to get its root ball or just the majority of its root system into the soil and if it can't do that it'll just be sort of stunted like a little weed and you know the further it lags behind the worse its development will be because it'll be constantly under the canopy of this much larger plant this seedling is developing nicely also it has a nice first true leaf and a second true leaf being worked on so this one is several days behind in terms of development, but like the others, you know, it has a lot of room to itself, so it should develop quite nicely. Here's the side view of that fifth seedling that's developing nicely. And I showed you its roots earlier, but now look how well developed this root system is.